Today we're looking at the BenQ X300G projector here. This is the giant box it comes in, but this is the actual projector and it makes a lot of bold claims, calling itself the world's first portable gaming projector, featuring a 4K short throw design, optical motorized zoom, and low input lag. I'm sure many of you understand certain aspects such as 4K resolution and low input latency, but it's the other key features that really make this stand out compared to a traditional projector but before I dive further, I want to make sure I thank BenQ not just for sending this projector to me, but also for sponsoring this video. For all you tech snobs out there, when it comes to projector technology, they provided a big list of key features you may care about. 2,000 ANSI lumens, HDR 10 and 3D support, two 8-watt stereo chamber speakers, real-time autofocus, and a bunch of other stuff. For our purposes, all of this doesn't matter because what I'm interested in is really twofold. As a new user of projectors, how easy is the projector to use in a number of use cases such as enjoying TV, movies, and playing video games? A few key things to note on the movie and TV front. First, it uses Android TV, and it comes with a custom Android TV module you will have to install yourself. It's a bit of a pain to install, but once you do it, it's extremely secure and you can basically just forget about it moving forward. Plus, as a module, if they ever released upgraded versions of the Android module down the line, it would be a cheap way to upgrade your projector without needing to replace the whole unit. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Android TV compared to other smart home options. However, the way this is integrated did create one of the smoothest experience I have had with Android TV. Watching anything is like most smart TVs at this point. Just load your favorite streaming platform and away you go. The projector advertises itself as a maximum of around 200 inches, but really the sweet spot's between 100 and 150, and I found the sweet spot for me to be about 120 inches for full 4K resolution. And I only really have one area in my entire house that could even work for this, and that's right here in this studio. It's not the most ideal of setups. I'm actually using a black sheet, like, you know, for your bed, but with a little 120 inch on 20, this is like a $20 screen I picked up over at Walmart. And it actually worked pretty damn well. But despite that really cheap setup, man, does this thing look really good. The picture is incredible. I positioned the projector to slightly lift it off the floor on a small box off center and it quickly automatically adjusted to the angle and just worked. The only slight adjustment I needed to make was using the included kickstand of sorts to lift the projector up a few centimeters to get the picture perfectly aligned. As a novice projector user, this was surprisingly simple to set up. Movies looked fantastic, and I even ran my DirecTV through the HDMI port it includes to watch some live sports, as it worked just as it would work on any TV. Now, they have this unique thing for Nintendo Switch, where they have a USB port that can both power and transfer a video signal from the Switch through it, so you don't need to use your dock. A simple one cable solution. Unfortunately for me, well, I wasn't able to actually use this feature because I don't have an appropriate cable on hand. And if you only own Switch, it doesn't come with the cable you would need for this. If I have any negative feedback on this or any feedback in general, some critical feedback, it would be that, hey, maybe you guys should start to include that cable in here since it's an advertised feature and is not a standard cable that most consumers are already going to own. Still, we were able to play Nintendo Switch through the included HDMI port with no hassle at all. One of the things they advertise is, is the ability to have the projector recognize what device is plugged into it and then adjust the settings accordingly to that device. You know how you will sometimes adjust picture settings for your cable box versus your streaming services versus a game console? Indeed, it does recognize these devices as their own thing and adjust the picture to whatever your save settings were. It's hard to show on camera, but it does just work. 
As a first time projector user, I feel like this just represents my entire experience with this projector. As an example, while the most ideal place to use this projector for me is in my studio with the screen set up and full light control in the room, and as you all know, dark rooms work really well with projectors, that's why movie theaters turn off the lights. It was how well it worked in my bedroom that surprised me. We had it shooting at walls towards the foot of our bed, and that wall isn't white. It's actually a darker color in that of itself, and without any screen or special projector paint, it looked fantastic. So much so, it saddened my fiance when I told her I had to remove the projector to finish this very video. That's right here, honey. You can have this thing back in a moment, okay? I promise. I'm almost done. One thing I'm happy to say is the sound quality is at a level I would say is good enough. If it's not at a level that I would say it's replacing, you know, your surround sound systems, but you know, it's got to compete with things like, you know, the speakers that come with your TV. And I honestly feel like the sound out of this is better than any of the TV speakers in my house. Don't believe me? Well, here is a sample of it while playing Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Thank you, honey, for that amazing gameplay you just gave us. Uh, now, to be fair, all the auto adjusting and off angle stuff sounds really nice on paper. As you can see, like every shot here, this thing isn't perfectly straight on, but it's not quite magic like you might think. Uh, for novice users like myself, though, it didn't take me long to find the right angles and the right height and the, you know, the right distance to get it all work. That's really what I was worried about as someone who doesn't have experience with projectors is, hey, is this thing going to be that hard to figure out? And it really wasn't. I didn't even read the manual and quickly got things adjusted pretty easily. Now, the biggest thing to remember is this is a short throw projector. It doesn't shoot the image out straight. It actually shoots it up at an angle, which allows you to have this projector much closer to your wall than a standard projector. This also means that if you take this thing and you put it high up on furniture and your wall is lower, it's not really gonna work. I mean, you could flip it on its head, but there's like this little control knob up here, not something I suggest you guys actually do, but you know, you can rotate the image. There's technically a mount on the bottom here. Uh, so you could, I mean, ceiling mount it, I guess in theory, if you want and just flip the image, but that's not really what this is meant for. Again, it's a portable gaming projector. Yeah, a lot of people might just use the projector stationary in one place, but if you wanna move it to different rooms, you wanna take it with you. It's a pretty simple setup. So I'm, I'm really happy and pleased overall with just the ease of use of this device. Now, I have no way to measure the latency, but I can say that I didn't notice much discernible difference, if any, moving away from my other TVs in my house, so it wouldn't be something I would be too concerned with. There are other gaming features I didn't test out because they aren't for me. As an example, for shooters, you can turn on a crosshair for games that don't have that, which can help you shoot more accurately. It's not my thing, but it is there if you want it. Now, in the documents on the website, it naturally talks a lot about how this compares to other projectors, but none of that matters for a projector novice like me. It just needs to work and do exactly what I want it to. And in every situation so far, that's exactly what it's done. The picture quality in HDR and 4K content is top notch, even looking better than my more expensive TV for the given size. And it's actually a bit of an argument at times in the house over who gets to use the dang projector versus any other TV. One feature I used a couple of times is the one button autofocus. It's this top middle button here. And sometimes the picture might get out of focus if you bump the projector or you just moved it or the lighting situation changed. And you know, that's really, common that happens in everyday life well you just hit the one button and bam it fixed it within a few seconds man I, that part to me was almost like magic because as someone who works with cameras all the time it deals with focus problems and stuff having something that just works with one button just damn i wish my camera worked that way now i'm saying all of this as a novice user because this isn't your cheap pocket projector that you could find on amazon 
There are plenty of super cheap projectors out there, but when you're a gamer, that's not really what you want. They all have really poor lumen levels. All of them are 1080p or worse. They don't support HDR, and you could just forget about good input latency. Think of this device as more of a, hey, I could just really easily put a really nice gaming TV anywhere or take it with me without the hassle. The BenQ X300G projector does run $1,799. Considering I find myself turning towards it for a lot of my gaming and content needs over my more expensive TV that I bought specifically for that use case, it's hard for me not to seriously recommend this to gamers, especially those that might not have a lot of projector experience. After all, you just want the damn thing to work and you want it to look good and play well. That's exactly what this thing does right out the box. You can go ahead and get yourself one of these down in the link in the description. And again, I want to shout out BenQ for sponsoring this video.